with the storytelling element in mind, how is it being on a medical show and touching on COVID? For me, it was really important that we play, you know, how this character has been introduced. And she was introduced in the first season as having diabetes. And so I think it's really important that I always say this about Dick Wolf shows. You know, you sit down to be entertained, you get up, you've been educated, but you also see the world as it is you know, with a little heightened, you know, dr drama. But it's important that people see someone of my age who has, you know, comorbidities on video, on Zoom, uh, because that's how they're living their lives. And just, it, for me, I just appreciate that uh, production looked ahead and, and prepared me for that. Yeah, I found it to be, coming in a huge responsibility for the show. I mean, we pride ourselves in being as authentic as possible. And, you know, a pandemic like this that happens maybe once in a lifetime, if not several, several lifetimes, you know, I really wanted to come in and try to be as authentic and real and really show that our hospital is doing what other hospitals are doing. You know, of course, like Ypeta was saying, there's certain things that we need to bend for dramatic effect, but in large and in general, we take that responsibility as a whole. And as far as our show is concerned, I really feel that we did a wonderful job, especially establishing COVID and our protocols and what the hospitals are actually doing and what our hospital is actually doing as well. Yeah, we have a unique opportunity as a medical drama to address it. And given the, the nature of Dick Wolf's world, talk about rip from the headlines. I mean, this is the most current will, will ever be. I mean, this is a global, headline and uh you know we did we did bend the truth a little bit with the masks because obviously we'd be in masks all, all the time but i think they did a really great job of um just fine that it, the, the the ed as a, as a non-covid um area and then we so we really balanced it out between the two so it's not all covid all the time we can still balance out stories that fans have come to expect from chicago men and, uh, and I'm, I'm actually really glad that we're able to um, have that balance. It's, it's and, really important. And can I add that it was set up brilliantly, our very first episode written by our head writers, uh, yeah. Diane Frolov and Andy Schneider. It was like the perfect storm, that episode. And it set us up for everything else that we're doing in terms of dealing with, with COVID. Yeah, it was, it's just honest. I think, I think that's what we, we do best. It's just, this is honestly what's happening and people can relate to that and um, possibly learn from it as a kid to saying. Have you received fan response in regards to the storylines this year? Yeah, my head of my acting actually reached out to me and it was, it was a real compliment. Um, just saying that how he, exactly what I just said, how honest, how he appreciates the honesty of it all. Um, and understands yeah. that we needed to do uh, the maskless moments for um, the nature of the show, but yeah. I mean, and obviously we were, uh, we're a hospital and hospitals are going through probably the most strenuous times they, they ever have in kind of their history. And we wanted to also impose that stress upon our ED as well. And everything that the actors are going through, the administration is going through during this COVID kind of era kind of puts this whole weight on everything that we're actually doing. It, it oddly for myself, because we're living it in real life, you know, jumping into the character and him feeling COVID and, you know, the weight of what COVID is, is was almost art imitating life in that sense too. So it was almost easier to really tap into the reality of it all, especially this season. Yeah, and you know, speaking of of those episodes of Zooming, you know, that's how we've all been feeling. We've been feeling isolated. This is yeah. how we're doing the world. Look at what we're doing here today. This is usually, you know, this huge thing at the studio with all three shows, you know, in, in this big room just rotating around and look how we're doing it. So, yeah. you know, having a good one isolated you know, I was living it and working it. And so it would, you know, it really is a, a <laughs> difficult time, but I love the fact that we're focusing on it the way we are. 
it's just so relevant. I think we, um, it, you know, we had to have it, and I'm so glad we did it. It made such sense for Epatha, but um, it just added that other element of of um, relevancy and authenticity to what's going on. Yeah. And when I re referred to a head of acting earlier, I meant the head of acting from my graduate school, um, who who reached out. Sorry, I just said head of my acting. Um, <laughs> I have a person who is the head of my acting in my life, and he called me. Yeah, he was uh, my head of acting of my graduate department at uh, school, and uh, that was really it was uh, I was really moved by the fact that he reached out and, and talked about how he appreciated he had COVID himself, and thankfully mm -hmm. he's he's doing all right. But he he said, you know, I really really appreciate the honesty of your show. Well, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. You've both been on the show for years now. What is it like to build such a rich history over the course of like several seasons as performers? For me, it's like the difference in like, like going to a drive through like in Taco Bell and like fucking grabbing your meal and like eating on the go and like sitting down at like a nice restaurant and like having like different courses and like pairing the wines like you know what I mean like it's I've just gotten to learn so much about character development and and have gotten the chance to get more and more specific and create more intimacy with my scene partners and like it's just it's been so fun I god I mean we're really lucky that we've had this much time the the noise the the noise kind of subsides with uh some character things so if you're if you're doing it either either like a guest spot or a film you might work two days a week or three days a month and it's and a lot of what you would bring to the character is things that you've come up with or written down or a lot of it is in your head and creating and or, or experiencing things um trying to get just a second nature way of uh, whether it be a physicality or a rapport with a character and by doing by having the amount of time that we've had and the seasons that we've had we all have pretty pretty well deep-rooted established relationships with the with the people that we interact with on screen so I feel like when I have a scene with Bowden even though he's nothing like Eamon there's such a deep-seated relationship there that it just get there's a it's just quiet like I, I you just trust you just trust the instru instrument more where it's I'm not thinking okay I have to do this before I in terms of character and okay like I, I don't have to spend a half an hour you know sitting in the quiet to get you know thinking going over things to to be in character it just kind of it's there and so that kind of gives way to I think a lot more you know rich it can anyway to rich uh, performances and then just trust with the people that you work with which is not always the case so your shippers are very passionate um what is it like to hear that kind of fan response i, I i'm grateful that somebody likes it <laughs> <laughs> i mean they, I, they they there's definitely they, it does feel like they, it's either hot or cold. People either really like it or they really hate it. And, and I get it, you know, I, I, at first, when, when Derek first kind of talked to me about it, I was like, Ugh, what? What? Um, <laughs> Why? Why would you like that, Kara? Because, not because of you. <laughs> um, because, you know, because girl code. Um, sure. But then, but then because of how, like, because of how they wrote their relationship and their friendship, it, it's like, it's been gradual for me too, to be like, well, gosh, darn it. I mean, if they're not just like, they're, they are very compatible. Like they're very similar types of people. Um, and, and so it, it is interesting. Um, Cause I, you know, I was like the number one Dossie shipper. So like, I totally, <laughs> yeah. When Karen first joined the show, she was 
I mean, she was literally a fan of Casey and Dawson, which was hilarious because me and Monica would be talking over the corner. I could see like, like Kara was like watching us like, oh, look at them over there. <laughs> it was hilarious. I was like, what's going on here? So I guess that made it, but that played into it really well. Do you know what I mean? So any awkwardness that um, that you had, you know, as yeah. a, you're right, as a character, as an act, was like completely organic too. And for, and for Casey as well. So I think that's all like, um, played really well into you know their relationship but it's been hiding in plain sight the whole time because they are good for each other you know um and Casey was in denial about that for a while and so he should have been because he wasn't thinking along those lines of you know relationship with someone who's who's been a really good friend you know so it's been um it's it should be bumpy and it should be awkward and it should be messy and if it's not then something's not quite right i wouldn't trust it giving the fans fodder for a lot of discussion <laughs> and, and they do they discuss it all I've, I've I, know, seen we, I saw some of those things there was that one video that someone sent which is great when they they analyze like like every single look that frame yeah like here's this thought and here's that thought yeah yeah God, I, I mean it's really clever sometimes i've looked at that and go well i just never would have even thought of that how do you hope chicago pd will continue to tell stories about the black lives matter movement i, I hope we just you know tell the truth you know i think the truth is what's most important the truth is what we've committed to as a team cast and crew um you know i i what I what I dislike sometimes when I when I watch storytellers on TV or film is when they you know they try to they 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 try but they only really like hit the surface and don't really dig as deep as they probably could to really pull as much of the truth out and um, you know one of the things I learned early on this show is that it's called Chicago PD um, naturally. Um, the police department is is a big part of the stories we tell, so that's the perspective that we're going to hit. Um, and Chicago is the first is the first thing we hear, and that's the main character. And the, the good and the bad and the ugly of Chicago is what we're um, obligated to storytell about. But it's hard to talk about Chicago um, or the police department authentically and truthfully without including um, the black struggle. And um, I'm grateful that 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 my character Atwater is able to is able to, uh, you know, authentically tell the truth uh, from his perspective, right? Um, and I think that's what, it's a part of me that really believes that's what TV needs, but I think that's what the cultures need. I think that's what our audience needs. Um, and so I just hope that we just continue to dig as deep as we can, you know? Um, there's a lot of red tape involved sometimes and how you story tell and uh, this capacity, but I, I, I don't think we're doing a, a terrible job at all. And, um, yeah. you know, we've come a long way and I think we can go further. Um, and every season we seem to do that a little bit. And it should be said too, that the writers, us actors, the producers, like everybody's constantly talking, constantly trying to figure out how to best talk about the, tell these stories without taking a side. You know, they, you know, Eric LaSalle, our directing producer uh, always says, you know, nobody's 100% nobody's right and nobody's 100% wrong which is exactly, uh, you know, that's life, right? And I think they've done a really nice job in the writer's room of doing that. And then we try to take the material that they give us and expand upon that. And I, I, I hope we're doing a good job. We, 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 we recognize the responsibility um, that, that, you, <laughs> that falls upon us trying to tell these stories and, and I hope we're, we're, we're doing a good job. We're, we're certainly working hard to.